Hi there, it's Roy Breton here from A Countryman's View. Hope you're doing well. The title today of my video is How a Narcissistic Wife Treats Her Husband. Let me share my screen a moment. Uh, here we go. So we've got a thumbnail picture here, and uh, there's the title, as I just said, How a Narcissistic Wife Treats Her Husband. And this is slightly normal from the things I normally do. But, uh, but here... The other day I'd done a video on traits of a narcissistic wife, uh, or sorry, a narcissist rather, a Christian view, and, and then narcissists, a Christian view. So um, this is just a continuation, like I said, something a little bit different, but let's come back to um, stop screen sharing. So something I find really hard is um, <clears throat> as, as a Christian, we are supposed to love our neighbors, love people, and uh, most of us do, thankfully, but I do seem to see more and more in Christian circles, uh, narcissistic type of behavior. And obviously I came across a lot of people in my time and um, you get to hear things aren't too clever. So some of the traits are, for example, um, a narcissistic person will make you feel like they are a problem, like, like you are the problem rather. And um, it's not you. It's not you because I've seen how some people behave and it's just, um, they just play the blame game. They will blame you for everything. They will never be satisfied and they'll criticize for everything you do. Maybe you'll bring a bag into the house or something and you'll put it somewhere. It will be in the wrong place. I heard of a friend of mine had a friend and sadly they... They, 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 um, this friend of a friend ended up getting divorced because wherever he put the bag, it would be in the wrong place. They were on the beach and uh, he was wandering around with this bag, wondering where to put it. And he just said, I'll put it here because it's going to be wrong anyway. And sadly, that's what it seems to be like with, with, an, with an ISIS. Now, I have came across more women than men, but I would imagine it may be the other way around. It's just that um, it, I probably came into contact with more men being in Christian circles and praying for more men rather than women. So, that, so I'm not sure what the statistics are, but um, but just don't think it think it's you, because nothing will please the narcissist. They're, they're also uh, perfectionists, so. None of us can really be a perfectionist because nothing is perfect in this world. So whatever happens, um, it, we, can, we can't. We, we can we can do things, but it's not always perfect. And if we're trying to do things um, in perfection, often what happens? They end up doing nothing because they can't do it in the way they want to. So it's just a, a terrible thing. Um, so it's not your fault. Just remember that. Um, so the next point I've got um, is a husband and wife should do things together, but she will never be for you. They will never, uh, 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 a narcissistic woman will never be for her husband. She will just be because she doesn't know how to trust you. Narcissistic people do not know who, how to trust. It's not in their nature. They don't have it in them, in my experience. A narcissistic person wouldn't, wouldn't never feel secure in a relationship. Um, I don't believe they've ever been secure, and I guess it's something that probably comes from childhood. And what we have to remember it is known as a mental illness. It's not just someone being unkind. I don't think they probably know they're doing it. Um, so, um, and it's a very difficult problem to break. Now, let me share my screen again, because something I heard, bear with me. Uh, So, in Ephesians 5, um, 22, it's a popular uh, verse or chapter, and um, many people get the wrong idea, but you have to read it in context. So, it's got marriage, Christ, and the church. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, just as a church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should own should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So the, the powerful bit, to me is that um, husband like love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So it's, a, it's very powerful verses of scripture there. But what I heard said once um, uh, um, with, regarding a husband being head of the house, uh, the lady believed this, but she said, in this case, I know better. So I'm not going to go by what the word says because I know I know better. Now, something I like about the word of God is it's truth and we can't change it. You can't twist things around to how you want it to be. We have to go by what the word says. But sadly, this lady was doing her own thing, which is, which is um, wrong. Stop this share. Um, we need to be doers of the word, not by feelings or what we want to twist it around to that we see so often in this world. And then Facebook, um, I've heard many people having to delete their female Facebook friends. Um, if the wife doesn't know them, they need to be deleted immediately because um, th this can cause a huge problem and um, they can't stand, they don't like you having friends anyway and, and having female friends just, just runs um, runs against the grain. I've heard of uh, many men accused of looking at women and they don't even know they've been looking at them. And uh, that, that, that's very sad when a man's trying to love his wife and he's being accused of something that he hasn't done. Now, I don't think any of us like that. Um, so so then, then on, on the subject of Facebook, I've, I've seen it's where friend requests from Facebook from other members of the family can cause a problem because they don't want another member of the family to be a friend of someone else. And it's just like, you can't get your head around it. It's so complicated. And this is what the narcissistic person will do. They will, they will complicate things. They will get your head in a spin and you'll think it's me, but no, it's them. But they will drive you around the bend. It's just, it's just not wrong. It's just wrong. It just doesn't line up with scripture. And I'll, on the same subject of friends, not, um, sorry, I've jumped a bit. Um, I jumped a line. Friend, friends can be a pro big problem. The narcissist does not want you to have friends as this is taking the attention away from her. They want to have the constant attention and a potential friend can take you away from serving the narcissistic person. They're, they're scared that friends may show you the truth about the relationship. Maybe a close friend might see, look deep into the relationship and uh, share some home truths, which you, we should do with with good friends we should be able to speak the truth into our lives not not to criticize but speak truth uh, especially as christians and um that they will generally try and find a problem with any friends that you have to try and discourage you and uh, yes yeah, this is another thing friends uh they don't like you seeing friends it's a, it's a problem to them and you know we all need, need friends even if we're married we still still need friends it's good to have people um, the, the Bible didn't tell us to do things alone. It told us to do things together and uh, to help each other. And so, um, so where are we? Oh, yeah, on the same subject, narcissistic people have trouble making friends. Um, maybe you're trying to introduce them to people, um, but they will make an excuse that no, that they don't like them and this and that. They'll just make it difficult. They complain they don't have friends and that you don't mix with friends and yet they're not willing to befriend people and get to know them because friendships takes time. Friendships don't happen in five minutes. We build friendships and we gain trust. And uh, many of us have friends who have known for many years and you build up that trust. It's not a five minute thing. So um, now another point I've got is fantasy land. Many, um, uh, many narcissistic people live in fantasy land. Um, they might say that they shouldn't have married you because people said um, that people warned you, uh, warned them about you. Um, but um, you, you never actually get the answer why. They can tell you they were warned, but they can't tell you why. And this is kind of like a, a, a game they, they play. 
and uh, they will say perhaps that they they could have done better if they'd have married someone someone else. But you know the reason they didn't marry someone else is because no one else would put up with their nonsense. Yeah, well, that, that's how I see it, um, because of the, the, the difficulty it is with living with people like this. Um, and don't forget that the narcissist, nothing is ever good enough. So whatever you try and do, you're going to try and try and help them or whatever, but you're just not going to live up to their expectations. Um, you may be able to for a short while, you know, you may really, you know, people may really try and put the effort in, but I'm afraid it's not going to happen. You, you won't be able to keep that level up. And if you could, the expectations would just go higher. So it is a pointless exercise. There is no love involved in this. Now, my next point is work ethic. Niacists can be great talkers and they like to think they know everything and how it should be carried out. I, I remember one lady was um, saying I was sitting on a mini digger and um, she said, uh, oh, that's easy, that's easy to do. I don't know why she came out of it, but she said, that's easy. And um, yeah, I said, have you driven one? And they said, no. Um, would you like to drive it? Or, no. <laughs> but yet they try and make out everything's easy and uh, that they can do better. So they're kind of belittling you. Whatever you do, they can kind of make you feel, potentially make you feel small. Um, however, the fact is that they know they know very little but they like to make out they do. I think they probably know they don't. Um, now they might want to start their own business and they'll do a lot of talking about it and it will sound very impressive. They can talk to their friends about they're going to do this and uh, it can sound, can sound good. But the fact is um, they probably won't take action. And if they do take any action, you will be the one carrying the business for them. You will have to be the action taker and do it for them because you are a, a servant for them. Like they're not really supposed to do much. You're supposed to serve them. And uh, it, they, they really don't want to take very much action at all from what I understand. And, um, and, and of course, if it doesn't work, then of course you, you will get the blame because it's your fault. You didn't help them. You didn't do enough. So once again, something that you can't win. And now, the next thing is servant mentality. Um, the narcissist will expect you to be a very willing servant. You need to be on call 24-7 uh, a day. Um, I've heard of people who have had very long lists of jobs to do, you know, it's, and the list never ends. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to have a list. I have a list of things uh, on my computer and uh, in a diary, the th things I have to do. I think most of us have that. But it's the narcissist will expect huge amounts of work to be done on this list. And it's not like, you you know, you're going to do, it's the weekend and you're going to do a short day. It's a full working day. One uh, friend I heard who, who is a friend and uh, unfortunately is, hasn't got the best wife. And uh, he, he was, he'd been creating a patio on his own, moving heavy slabs and what have you. And uh, he had dinner in the evening, it was eight o'clock. And she asked him if he was going to do more work. And there was no, like, he may be tired um, or anything like that. It's just, you know, you're a machine. You're my servant. Get on with it. And very sad. Very sad. Just not just not right. Uh, where are we? Um, yes. So uh, a niacist expects you to be a willing servant and you need to be there 24 hours a day for any needs that may rise. It doesn't matter about sleeping. If if they have a need, uh, you will need to be there for them. You, you can't you can't you know even if you're in the middle of sleep, you, you, you may you may have to get up and help. Um, it, the the narcissist will not make like the idea of you making decisions on your own, especially when it comes to money. Um, however the amount the small however small the amount may be. Um, so, you know, admittedly, I, I agree if, if you're a couple, you do things together, you, you share things and you something big, you negotiate things, but if it's something small, you're just going to buy something, then you don't have to ask for every single thing, uh, especially if it's for business or something, something you need, then it, it, it gets silly, but the narcissist will be very insistent and want to know where 
everything is going and of course the answer will be that you didn't need it even though you probably did so that's part of being a willing servant and then we're getting towards the end now the blame game uh <clears throat> Anisus knows how to shift the blame anything that she does wrong will immediately be blamed onto you um so um basically they can't be wrong um that they're very unforgiving if they make a mistake they can quickly shift the blame in a, in a remarkable way i've heard some real horror stories unfortunately and it's just um upsetting especially when perhaps the man is very respectable and uh, kind and it's just just not right um it i think many many people and i guess this applies for men and women will decide it's easier to take the blame rather than having an argument because you're not going to win an argument with an narcissist it's it's and they're not going to forget either so it's easier to almost accept the blame keep the peace and stop stop any arguments that might happen but we know this isn't right and we all need to be accountable and as christians we especially need to be accountable we need solid people around us to um keep us on the right tracks and um and finally, I've got no emotional feelings for others. Now, fortunately, most of us know how to talk to each other and uh, talk to each other in a respective way uh, and, and so forth. But sadly, the narcissist will have no feelings. Um, it's almost like having a computerized or an AI response. I think perhaps the AI would give a better response sometimes than what a narcissistic person w w would give, sadly. And um, it really appears that these people don't have any emotions it's almost like talking to a machine you know you expect a machine to work all day um or a computer to keep working all day and that's obviously different from a human but a narcissist will want you to keep going all day there's you know there's no talk about rest if you've had a really busy day then had to drive 500 miles they wouldn't think anything of it they it's just part of something you have to do so uh, that that's all my points but finally the sad bit for me is that jesus told us to love our neighbors and uh when i got born again 25 years ago something big changed inside my thinking turned around slightly uh, totally totally my thought pattern was totally different uh, in a much better way and um sadly it doesn't seem to work like this with the narcissist they just seem to um you know, like i say i've seen many Christian believers, but I don't understand how they can listen to great teaching, and yet they don't know how to treat people properly. I believe there's a, well, being a mental illness is, is part of it, but also if they haven't got the full revelation of who they are in Christ, you're not going to realize what we what you have inside you, and uh, that is very sad indeed. So if you've got any questions on this video, um, uh, I'm here to help. Please feel free to comment. And um, I'm a bit behind with my comments, but I will try and get on top of them. And uh, please feel free to like this video. And thanks very much for watching.